I hope that you are well. Coming at you today from Perth, Australia with a brand new type of video. This is my first independent airline review. So I tend to always book my flights on Skyscanner. I just always search for the cheapest route possible for wherever I'm wanting to travel to. And it often means that I'm traveling with a bunch of different airlines from around the globe, many of which I haven't heard of, let alone heard reviews of. So I thought this year I'd start a new series of airline reviews, which I thought would be super useful if you're thinking about flying with a particular airline that you may have never heard of. And this is just gonna be my complete honest feedback of what I think the airline is like, what they give to you, and whether I think it's worth the money that I pay for it. So my first airline is Garuda Indonesia, which is the national airline of Indonesia. It was my first time flying with them and I had a 33 and a half hour flight from London Heathrow to Perth in Australia with a 15 and a half hour layover in Jakarta, which is the capital of Indonesia. I found the flight on Skyscanner for 350 pounds, which is really, really cheap. And it was the cheapest that I found on the day that I wanted to fly, which was the 23rd of January. And I booked it about six weeks prior. Um, I think I booked it on the 5th of December. And that price would include 30 kgs of checked in baggage allowance. So in my opinion, a really, really good price from the get go. The first leg from London to Jakarta was 13 and a half hours. And my flight left at 10 p.m. So it was an overnight flight, which in my opinion is definitely preferable for anything long haul. And I arrived at the airport three hours prior, which is arguably excessive, but I feel like you can never be too sure with these super large flights. And at that point, the check-in queue took about 20 minutes to get from the back to the front. So pretty standard, but not bad at all. The guy at the check-in desk was not what I was expecting at all. He was about my age, extremely British with a London Cockney accent, but the check-in was very smooth. I had no issues. Ooh, I should also mention that Garuda Indonesia do have an airline app where I did check in 24 hours prior to my flight. However, you couldn't get your boarding pass like on your phone. You know how you can do that with a lot of airlines, like you literally just have your boarding pass on your phone. You couldn't do that. You still had to queue up and check in no matter whether you were dropping bags or not. I mean, I was dropping bags anyway, but their policy is that they have to give you a physical boarding pass. Other than that, I wasn't overly impressed with the app, to be honest. It was a little bit glitchy, I felt like. I still managed to check in, but it wasn't, exactly straightforward, but managed it in the end and so didn't end up being an issue. So anyway, at the check-in desk, they took my bag and they gave me my boarding pass and they did advise that I would have to recollect my bags at Jakarta as opposed to them going all the way through to Perth because my flight was in over 24 hours time, so I couldn't check in for that. So yeah, they told me that I would have to recollect my bags, but that was fine, it was clear, it was good. And the guy also told me that about eight rows in front of where I was sitting, there was gonna be rows and rows of free seats. And so if I wanted to spread out after the flight had taken off, then I could, I was like, oh, okay. So off I went through security and duty free and whatnot. The departure gate for our flight was absolutely huge, which was good, lots of space. The boarding staff were extremely chilled out and friendly, obviously first class and business class gate to go first and then everyone in economy. They didn't actually start boarding until about 15 minutes after they said it would start, but it went pretty swiftly when it did begin, so no issues. Now, I absolutely hate standing up and queuing to board the plane, so I normally literally wait until everyone's gone and jump in at the back. The only problem this could possibly present is finding space in the overhead compartments, but since my flight was not full, this wasn't a problem. My suitcase fit absolutely fine. And also, my carry-on suitcase was definitely over the 7 kg carry on allowance that they put in their policy. But I thought I'd risk it for a chocolate biscuit and worth it because they did absolutely no checks whatsoever. And it seemed like they just didn't really care, which obviously was great for me. However, I can't guarantee that it's gonna be like that in the future. The plane itself was fine, nothing special. You get more leg room than a short haul flight, but it definitely felt like less leg room than other long haul flights I've been on, like Malaysia Airlines, for example. The safety instructions were all on the TV screens as opposed to the cabin crew live demonstrations, which was a slight disappointment for me because I find that quite entertaining, but whatever. In terms of facilities, obviously you have a TV which had a remote control. There wasn't a huge selection of movies, but the ones they did have were a fairly good variety of old and new. They provide you with headphones, socks, an eye mask, earplugs, pillow and blanket, which is all useful. And also a wet cleansing cloth at the beginning of the flight, which I really appreciate. The one thing I guess I was expecting from a long haul flight, but there wasn't, was a USB charger. I thought I was gonna be able to charge my phone, but alas, I was not. I'm sorry I didn't film the bathroom, but it was good, clean. And I like the fact that they had a stash of disposable toothbrushes, which you could help yourself to. I don't know if that's normal, but I thought it was a nice touch. When the food came, there should have been an option of chicken and rice 
rice or beef and potatoes. However, when they got to me, they told me that they'd run out of chicken, so it was basically beef or nothing. So I had the beef, and luckily it wasn't bad at all. Came with some veggies, and I liked it. And the crew were friendly enough. I can't say I interacted with them too much. I'm not a very demanding passenger at all. So after I watched one movie and ate one meal, I fell asleep. And when I woke up, there was only one hour left. I'm not sure how I managed that. I only very vaguely remember rejecting the two other meals that were offered to me. But I mean, really, who wants to eat during the night while they're sleeping anyway? I, I don't. Seemingly everyone else, but that's weird to me. So sorry, not sorry that I haven't reviewed the other meals. The landing was incredibly smooth, so top marks for the pilot. We filed off the plane promptly and efficiently, and it didn't take long to walk to baggage reclaim, but when we got there, our bags were already coming around. That was impressive. So my bag came literally within about 30 30 seconds. And arriving into Jakarta airport was so much more pleasant than arriving at Bali's Denpasar airport where you practically get hounded with people just trying to sell you taxi rides. None of that at Jakarta, super chill and professional, really nice. So I had my overnight layover, I had pre-booked a hotel near the airport which was all good. It was really good actually, I stayed at the FM7 resort and I highly recommend staying there if you, like me, have an overnight layover in Jakarta, they were just great. In the morning my flight was at 10.25 a nice reasonable time and I arrived two hours beforehand. Again, I checked in on the app beforehand to choose my seat, but I still had to check in my bag and collect my boarding pass, but there was no line at the check-in desk. The departure gate was gorgeous actually, humongous windows looking over the airstrip, loads of shops and restaurants around and nice comfy seats. The plane boarded efficiently and on time. I felt like I actually had the same amount of legroom on the short haul as the long haul, maybe a teeny bit less. I was very happy they still had TVs and a cushion and a blanket for the short haul as that's definitely not always the case. And the TVs were even touchscreen. It must have been a newer plane. And I did actually have the choice of the chicken or the beef this time. So obviously I went for the chicken to compare and it was all right. I preferred the beef though, to be honest. It also came with this bread roll that looked like a giant egg. That was weird. Again, everything else with that flight was fine. Really friendly staff, arrived on time, smooth arrival. I waited about 10 minutes for my bags at baggage reclaim and that was that. So overall, Garuda Indonesia, I'm giving you 4.5 stars because it was fun. I don't really have any complaints. Everything went as it should. Nothing completely blew me away, but for the price I paid, I really wouldn't expect anything more. I hope this video has been useful, even though there's been nothing outrageous to note, but it's always good to know which airlines you can trust and Garuda Indonesia, I will definitely fly with again. Have you flown with Garuda Indonesia and did you have a similar or different experience? Let me know in the comments and I will see you in the next video. Bye.